Nigel's Soul by Oliver Tonic. This is an audio short story. This one is very special to me because it's the story I used in my proposal to my wife. I wanted to share it with the world because I know there's a lot of people who need it. If you enjoy, please send it to your friends. You never know who around you needs a little bit of love and appreciation. Now, without further ado, please enjoy Nigel's Soul. There once was a flourishing garden full of radiant flowers and plants. There were all sorts of eye-popping colors, shapes, and sizes. The gardener took pride in his green grass, glorious trees, and of course, his flowers. One plant in the garden, however, was rather peculiar. Hidden between a row of trees was what appeared to be a bush that was a twisted knot of thorns, wrapping each around the other, covering itself over in a dome-like shape. The knots of thorns were so thick the poor plant couldn't see out of herself. All she could see were her own thorns and thistles shrouding her in darkness. And that was all she observed from when the sun came up and shone on her in the day until the moon kissed her with its glow in the night. One day, when the sun was shining brightly high in the sky and the day was warm, she felt the gentle churning of the ground next to her. Of course, all she could see were thistles, but she knew the feeling well. She knew the sound, too. It was the soft sound of digging next to her. The gardener had come to plant. She listened as he dug and dug. She heard the digging stop. Then she heard the sound of something new being placed next to her. She knew how the rest would go. The gardener would then lay some fertilizer, then cover over its roots with dirt, and then give the dirt a nice loving pat. The gardener did just so. Then down poured the soothing sprinkle of the water on the ground next to her, followed by her own gentle shower. The water seeped down through the crevices of her twisted and knotted thorns, finding a way to reach her and seep down into her roots. The droplets dripped gently from the points of her thorns onto her. Though she couldn't see the sunshine, it warmed the gentle drops, turning her dark-domed home into what was like a comforting steam room that gradually cooled her as it evaporated. This was the happiest part of her day, perhaps the only part of her day she enjoyed. She allowed the feeling to linger as the last few droplets dropped, and suddenly she saw a ray of light penetrate the darkness. She squinted and looked up at this new hole in her roof. She saw nothing at first, but then was startled by a face. It was a bright face and a friendly face, one that mimicked the glow of the sun that she hadn't seen in so long. Hello, he said cheerfully. Sorry to interrupt your shower. I couldn't tell if you were all done drinking yet. The thorny plant blinked in surprise as she looked at the limb of the sun plant pulling open the roof of her home. He had carefully placed it right between two of her thorns and prodded ever so gently to make his opening. He had been so careful, she hadn't realized he had done so. She was silent and shocked for a moment. Hello, she said back softly. The face smiled. So you do talk. My name is Sol. What's your name? She thought for a moment. Nija, she replied back shyly. The face looked concerned. Why did you hesitate? Were you unsure? She looked up and replied, I guess, I guess I haven't told anyone in a while. I suppose I'd almost forgotten. The sun plant frowned. Well, what terrible neighbors you must have had. Alas, the thorn plant sighed. No, it is me who is the terrible one. What? Why? asked Sol. Do you not say hello first? Well, no. It's more than that, she replied. Well, then why? he asked. I... I'm a weed, she said shamefully. The sun plant stared at her for a while, her looking back at him. There was silence between them, and then suddenly he began to laugh. It started out as a chuckle, and then turned into a full-blown laugh. The thorn plant was shocked, and even a bit hurt. Don't laugh, she cried. It's not funny. But he couldn't stop. <laughs> it certainly is funny, he said, finally slowing down. He wiped a tear from his eye and chuckled. <laughs> when you're the farthest thing from it. 
Nigel's eyes welled up with tears. I, I am a weed. I am. I know I am. Tears rolled down her face, and it was the last thing the sunflower saw before she closed her thorny branches over herself again. Oh, he exclaimed, embarrassed. Oh, no. His voice came through muffled by her wall. I, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. She could feel his petals lightly brush the outside of her as he moved his head all around, looking for an opening to see her face. Please, I'm so sorry. I really am. This went on for some time. Finally, as his apologies and pleadings seemed to be falling on deaf ears, he fell silent. As the light began to fade and darkness dominated the night, Nyjah in her permanently dark home had long since stopped crying. In the silence, she considered her peculiar new neighbor. No one had ever denied her self-proclamation as a weed. Others had either not paid attention to her or simply agreed with her. Many had even pointed it out. But this one was different, and she didn't know why yet. She was curious about him. It was either that curiosity, or maybe it was just the rustling she heard, that made her peek outside her thorns to see what was happening. She looked up to see her peculiar new associate, wiggling? Her thought was so loud it came out as a whisper to herself. Sol looked down. Why, yes. He lit up when he saw her. Well, I'm actually dancing, he said. Dancing? said Nigel. Yeah, in the sun. I absolutely love dancing in the sun, don't you? Nigel looked at him as his leaves turned toward the sunlight, waving up and down. His stem would go back and forth to its own little rhythm. She smiled, and out came a little giggle. No, she said shyly. What? he said. Is that a smile I see? Nigel tucked her head back into her thorns a bit, but still smiled. Sol laughed while still doing his little jig. Well, you must have danced before. All flowers dance in the sunlight. Nigel scoffed. I am no flower, she said flatly. Sol looked perplexed. But you are, though, he said emphatically, and a very beautiful one at that. Nigel retorted, No, I'm not. I'm a weed. Sol looked at her and stopped dancing. He cocked his head to the side a bit, looked at her, and paused before answering. Hmm. Yeah, you said that last time, didn't you? They looked at each other for a while. Nigel could tell the sunflower was choosing his words carefully. Let me ask you, he began. When you hide in there, you can't see the sky. How do you know when the sun comes up? She considered his question. Well, it's warm, and sometimes the light comes through a little. Anything else? he asked. Nigel thought some more. Um, well, I guess my leaves tickle a little bit. He smiled. Ah, they do. And what does that tickle make you want to do? Nigel's head was all the way out of her shell now. I guess... She paused and blushed a bit from embarrassment. It makes me move around a little bit while I'm inside. Sol chuckled. <laughs> Isn't that dancing? She smiled again. Yeah, she said slowly. But then her smile faded a bit. But when I wiggle around like that, my thorns poke me. Well, that's because you're supposed to dance out in the open. Come on, stand up straight. Nigel was very scared and shocked at his request. No, I... Please, he pleaded. I beg of you. He looked deep into her eyes, and she couldn't help but look back into his. I really need someone to dance with, he said. His eyes pulled the words out of her. All right, I will. It had been so long since she had totally emerged, she could barely remember a time when she had. But as her thorns unraveled and she stood erect, she felt a relief she had forgotten. As her sunplant friend showed her how to wave her leaves and freely wiggle her stem to and fro, it all felt so natural, liberating, and the memory slowly crept back of her dances long ago, filled with joy and freedom. The two laughed and talked and danced all day until the last ray of sunshine faded away beyond the horizon. Nigel couldn't stop smiling, even after the dance was done. She noticed neither could Sol, but it wasn't because she gave him a dance partner like she assumed. It was because her smile was the most beautiful thing he had ever seen. The next morning, Nigel woke up to a buzzing. 
an all too familiar buzzing, one she did not like. One by one they came hovering lightly around her. The fast beating of the wings, the black and yellow stripes, and their little antennas wiggling. She saw their big black eyes coming right into her face. She shook her head. Shoo! Shoo! she said. They flew all around her head and stem. She began to shake her leaves. Oh no, no, please go, she insisted to them. Then she realized she had spent an entire night outside of her thorns when she looked down at herself. She gasped and quickly shrank back inside and covered over herself with her sharp shell. The bees gently bumped the outside of her. She heard a yawn as Sol woke up from his rest. The buzzing persisted. Gradually, she began to hear chuckling from her neighbor. Various giggles to snickers and stifled laughs. At first, she wondered if it was for her, so she peeked out. There, the sunny flower was being bombarded by the little fuzzy insects with a big smile on his face. Nigel was shocked and poked her head out. What are you doing? Why are you laughing? She exclaimed, perplexed. Soul still beaming, giggled. It tickles. Nigel was disturbed. They are awful. Why do you let them do that? Sol waved them away momentarily so he could talk to her. What do you mean awful? They're just trying to give you kisses. Nigel began to open her mouth to respond, and one of the little intruders found her face poking up from the thorns. She went cross-eyed, looking at it as it buzzed down and landed on her nose. She was just about to shake it off. No, no, Sol said quickly but softly. Don't scare it. Let it. Nigel tensed up. They had scared her for as long as she could remember. The bee walked its tiny little feet on her softly. It stared at her with its big black eyes. Nigel started to get nervous. Close your eyes, Sol whispered. She did. She waited intently for a moment. Then came a tiny little nuzzle as it buried its face into hers. She cringed and then relaxed a bit. The bee nuzzled more. She felt herself smile. Then out came the bee's tiny little tongue that licked her quickly. Nigel couldn't help it. She began giggling like crazy. It does tickle, she exclaimed. Then the bee, a bit startled, flew off. Her thorns loosened and she came out of them again. She opened her eyes to see Sol gazing at her with a look she hadn't seen before. A soft smile on his face. What? she asked. Do you know why they do that to you? he asked. Another one landed right on her head again before she could reply. Oh, she exclaimed before laughing. Why? It's because of your spectacular aroma. The bee crawled down and tickled her again. What? She said, still laughing and looking at it. You don't realize how incredible you smell, along with your vibrant colors. Nigel heard him and would have denied him had more bees not come and rolled around in her petals. As they kissed her, more came to nuzzle and kiss him, and they laughed and giggled with each other all day until the last bee left in the evening. As the sun began to set and the last bee flittered off into the distance, the sun plant looked over at Nija. Hmm, so you have the uncontrollable urge to dance in the rays of the sun, just as only flowers do, and you have a smell so sweet bees come from miles around just to taste your delicious nectar. Nigel looked back at him, eyes wide and speechless as she blushed. Sol sighed with a smile and shook his head, and then turned toward the sunset and wiggled a bit. Well, you certainly are the most fascinating weed I ever did see. He wiggled with a smirk on his face toward the horizon. Nigel thought for a moment. Sol, she said. Yeah, he replied. She stopped and hesitated. Say I, well, suppose I wasn't a weed. She looked down at her twisty, thorny body. What kind of flower looks like this? Sol looked at her. Her face looked up and he saw her smile had fallen when she considered herself. It was as though it had fallen off into the soil when she looked down. Nigel saw him look her top to bottom, his face full of hurt. Well, those twists and those knots and that wall you make out of them, that's all completely up to you, he said.
But those thorns, those thorns are there because you are so beautiful a flower. You are one so precious that you are never to be touched by careless hands. Your brilliance is only to be enjoyed by the careful and appreciative. She looked into his eyes and then she looked down at one of her thorns. Not once, not even once, had she ever seen them as anything but ugly and monstrous. In a way, he spoke very softly, they prove how priceless you are. Nigel's eyes widened. She looked up at his kind eyes again, and her own welled up with tears. Sol reached out to her thorns, all twisted and coiled. In horror, she recoiled and sunk deep inside of herself again. Layers upon layers of stem covered over her face, and the thorny plant made the thickest wall she had ever made. So thick, she could hardly hear his muffled cries of apology over whatever he had done. What had he done? Nigel wondered as her tears burst forth and she wept profusely in her black abode. Her thorns tightened around her, sticking into her, squeezing out more tears. No one had ever spoken to her that way. No one had ever told her. In the night, her external leaves flitted this way and that. Her outer wall was chilled. The wind waved her leaves quite violently. The higher-pitched sounds of the wild jingling of the wind chimes in the garden pierced into her dark cave. The night was bitter, but inside, Nigel's dreams manifest between external disturbances. She dreamt of a time long ago. She saw a baby blooming plant dancing happily in the sun. She remembered laughter from the tickle of bees and a golden butterfly landing and kissing her tenderly the beauties of the world welcoming her to a new life of wonder. These were dreams of a past no weed could have ever had. She awoke to a view of the world of her own choosing, a world of blackness and silence. This world did not match her dreams, and this was no longer the world she wanted. Her coils began to loosen. Slowly, a gray light poured in, and she unraveled out of her tangles. She called out to her neighbor, Soul, I'm sorry, I... She stopped. She was struck at the state of her companion. There he was, planted, his head held low, his leaves in a tangle, bent and twisted. His stem was creased and barely holding up his body. But saddest of all was that his bright glowing petals were all but diminished entirely from his head. What... what happened? She exclaimed. Soul was silent for a while. The wind, he said slowly, blew my petals off. Nigel saw a gold spot on the ground, here and a few there. She saw a bit off in the distance, but for the most part they had vanished, the wind having taken them away. Sol saw the hurt in her eyes for him. She reached for him and gently touched the bend in his stem. His body flinched just a bit and then heaved under her touch. She could tell it was more than just embarrassment at how he looked. He winced in pain. He moaned a bit. Shh, she said. It's gonna be okay. His head sunk lower and he began to cry. Oh, soul, she said as if it had been spoken from her heart itself. She nuzzled the side of his face. You talked about being a weed, he said in his tears. Look at me now. I'm no flower. She felt her heart sink. She looked him up and down as he sobbed. She felt desperate as she felt a breeze blow through the garden, shaking his poor limbs already only dangling by a strand. She hung her head down low, beginning to cry herself, when suddenly she felt a warmth on her leaf. She looked down to see a ray of light making her green limb glow. She followed its path up into the sky to see the sun peeking through the gray clouds. Her leaf began to wiggle. Do you feel that? She smiled. She saw the rays begin to creep up his stem and reach his leaves. The tingle, she said. She began to rock back and forth with a grin. He looked up at her, still looking dejected. I know you feel it, she insisted. It makes you want to dance. She looked right at him, beaming. Slowly, Sol's eyes began to brighten a bit. 
His leaves began to move ever so slightly. There you go, she laughed. You know, petals or not, it's only flowers that dance in the sun. Sol's tears began to dry, and he couldn't help but give a weak smile. He began to move slowly and as best he could. Nigel closed her eyes and smiled a satisfactory smile. Mmm, feel that tingle. Off in the distance, along came a buzzing. A couple bees came to visit. One landed promptly on Sol's head. He winced, still tender from his loss. Nigel was doing a little shimmy. Oh, be careful, Miss Bee, she said. The bug looked at her as it crawled across his face. Don't worry, she's only there to kiss it better, she said as the other one landed on her petals. She giggled. And they give the very best kisses. The bee nuzzled him and licked up some pollen. He couldn't help but give her a genuine smile. You know, they only come and visit the sweetest smelling of flowers. Sol chuckled and shook his head, looking down. Then he looked at her. You don't say. I do say, she laughed. Just then they heard the firm but soft footsteps of the gardener. As his comforting shadow came over them and momentarily stopped their dancing, he stood over the sun plant spot and began to sprinkle fresh water all over him. Nigel cocked her head to the side and said to Sol, Now why would the gardener come and water something that he didn't absolutely love in his garden? she said with a grin. The water dripped down his body and puddled in the dirt around him. As the gardener finished, he lifted up his water can and walked over to her. Nigel looked up at the proud gardener as he tipped the canister over her. She closed her eyes. As the water began to sprinkle on her head, she heard the voice of Sol. Why, indeed. With those words, it all came rushing back, and the thorny plant came to a true realization. As the water stopped pouring and the gardener walked away, a little golden butterfly landed on her head. It sucked a tiny droplet off her petals and fanned its wings gracefully over her nose. It lifted away to reveal Sol looking into her eyes. She felt his roots deep in the earth reaching down and touching hers. He rubbed his face against her petals. As she looked down, she saw the water puddle gradually sinking into her roots. She caught a reflection. It was that of a beautiful, deep red rose. For Danny, my true love and best friend, I'm glad I was planted next to you. Hey guys, it's Oliver. Thank you so much for listening to Nigel's Soul. Give me a like if you enjoyed it. I'm doing this for free just so my work can be out there and enjoyed unencumbered by paywalls. But if you feel so inclined to pay for this as you would a regular book, you can support this story and my continued writing through Patreon. It helps me out immensely in the writing and performing of my work, even if you're only a patron for a month or two. More tales are coming, so subscribe and stick around. I have more stories to tell you.